Hello, folks. Welcome. Thanks for dropping in and uh, being here in Zoom and uh, sharing practice with us later on YouTube. And um, the time this is being recorded is um, spring equinox. And hmm, I like these uh, solstice and equinox times and celebrations. They remind me of and reconnect me to some degree to my ancestry and mm, earth-based spirituality. So um, I find them helpful traditions that uh, resonate for me. So this time of spring equinox is would traditionally be and is still celebrated as a time of setting intention or planting seeds as spring planting. Everything's covered in snow out my window, but uh, depends where you are in the world. Um, and it's a time where you we can be kind of uh, reflecting on what's been composting over the winter. Hopefully rest has been part of your practice and uh, self-compassion over the winter months. And in spring, there's a kind of a new energy that can come and uh, more activity if if one is well and able-bodied to do that and so I was reflecting on intention and it's a very important part of the dharma of the eightfold middle path wise intention and just to give a very very brief context of the eightfold path it's it's part of the four noble truths or the four ennobling truths that the Buddha awoke to. The first being that part of this life experience is the experience of suffering. And there's so much more we can go into around that. And that there is a, the second noble truth is that there's a cause for suffering. And the third that is that if there is a cause, there can be an ending. So the cause of suffering, the Buddha awoke to the awareness, the knowing, the insight. <laughs> That's an understatement. Profound insight that um, clinging is the cause of suffering. And... If there's a cause for something, if we take away the cause, then that dis-ease will not arise. And so the third noble truth is that there can also be an ending of suffering. And the fourth ennobling or noble truth is the way to the end of suffering, meaning the eightfold middle path. Okay, so that's context. So the Eightfold Middle Path begins with wise view. And wise view means knowing the Four Noble Truths, which, you know, we just named, didn't even go into them. There's lots of uh, recordings here on the YouTube channel that go into them in depth. And so uh, wise view is the, the understanding, the, the knowing, the exploration of these four noble truths. And then the second of the Eightfold Path, meaning the way to the ending of suffering, is wise intention. So wise intention... I'm not going to list the rest of the eight because it's too many words and too many lists and it's going to get confusing. So right now we have the Four Noble Truths and the fourth one is the Eightfold Path. 
Now, wise intention has three aspects to it. The first is nakama, renunciation. Hmm. Again, such a huge topic, so important on the path to awakening, so important. So renunciation is sometimes also referred to as non-greed or in the positive as generosity or renunciation, letting go. Renunciation is a, is very important and is part of a, letting go of all the things that we cling to that are causing us suffering. So I'm just going to list the other two and, and then we'll come back. So first, the first wise intention is renunciation. The second wise intention is non-hatred. This is this means friendliness, kindness, metta, loving kindness, the metta bhavana practice, metta meditation, which um, you may be familiar with or you may not, and that's okay. It's a cultivation of kindness and goodwill. Um, non-ill will. And then the third wise intention, so we have renunciation and non, there's different ways to say it, non-ill will. It, the third one is non-cruelty or non-harm. So this would correlate, be cultivated with our Karuna practice, the compassion practices. Um, it means harmlessness, nonviolence. So, yeah, they're 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 similar non harm and or non ill will and non harm. You know, related. One could feed into the other. Um, you might think of non harm as um, you know the actual acting out of causing harm with the speech or with action or um, yeah. And in the positive, it's opposite would be harmlessness or cultivating compassion. Hmm. So uh, a possibility of if you find it helpful to ritualize or formalize these these uh, ancient, very ancient mm, times of transition, like equinoxes or solstices, um, in one possible way of doing this, and you can do it however floats your boat or not at all, is um, for myself, I have a small dish of water and two small pieces of paper and a pencil. And then I have a plant. I'll show everyone my Bodhi tree again. Oh, this is so pretty. She loves to be seen. Look at that baby. That's a Bodhi tree. Um, that's the tree of the Buddha. Not that one. But yes, maybe <laughs> that the Buddha awoke. Um, practicing underneath the Bodhi tree. So, little dish of water. Maybe there's a plant somewhere in your house, or you could take it outside when the ground's not frozen. Uh, and a pencil. You don't need any of these items. You can do this practice just with your heart's intention, or you can formalize them in your own way afterwards. If you have an altar, that might be a place that you would do something with. Hmm. And so the reflection 
to align this with wise intention of the Dharma, of the Eightfold Path, of our intention to awaken and to um, end suffering, might be to reflect on these three wise intentions that are part of the Eightfold Path of renunciation, of goodwill, of harmlessness. Um, and so with the first aspect of what we what we would like to dissolve, so the little bowl of water with the little piece of paper and the pencil that um, you could reflect on and explore if there's something here, a, a belief, a pattern, a habit, an old groove, um, that might show up like speaking harshly to yourself <laughs> or mm, not uh, giving yourself enough rest or speaking harshly with others or actually doing harm physically hopefully not <laughs> um, it may be kind of um some clinging some greediness something that you would like to dissolve and you might reflect on and kind of thank that pattern, that habit, that groove for how it has tried to protect you. That's been there as a self-protection usually. And so you can kind of uh, write it down and let your inner awareness know that's no longer needed. Thank you for trying to protect me. This way is no longer serving or no longer needed. And then you can place it in the water and it will dissolve. Might take a little while, but uh, it will. So uh, if you're not using the water and paper, you could just take some time to reflect on these qualities for yourself. If there's something that you feel ready to dissolve, and if you're using the paper, you could write it down. Hmm. You can offer it to the water if you're doing that. Just letting that that habit, that pattern that's no longer needed or no longer serving, letting it dissolve. And you can do this in your mind's eye or in this way if that's what you're choosing. And then thinking again of these wise intentions that are part of awakening. What seeds do you want to plant deeply in your heart, mind, awareness? What seeds of generosity, of renunciation? <laughs> um, what seeds of goodwill, friendliness, kindness, metta? What seeds of harmlessness, kindness, non-violence, non-harm? So this could be to the earth, to yourself, in general, to the world.
What seeds do you want to plant and grow? And if you're using a plant or if you have one nearby that you want to use, you could make it a small piece of paper and maybe roll it up or try to tuck it into the, into the soil. Or just lay it on top and as you water it, it will, it will uh, compost. I'm tucking mine right into the soil like a seed. Mm. So these wise intentions. Mm. They're they're so skillful in that they can mm, turn the light of awareness to the times when we are not practicing wise intention, when we are mm, sowing the seeds of clinging or greed or um, sowing the seeds of unkindness with our words or actions. Um, unfriendliness with ourselves, with each other, with the world. And <clears throat> at the same time, they bring us into this bhavana, this cultivation of what is wholesome and skillful and onward leading. And this takes a lot of intention and wise intention because we all have deep grooves, deep habits <clears throat> that require a strong amount of effort, wise effort, another part of the path, and strong intention because intention comes before our speech. Intention comes before actions and intention also comes even before thoughts, but that's pretty subtle. <laughs> and um, yeah, so these are other aspects of the path. And so intention fuels our wise speech, our wise actions, our wise livelihood, and also our wise mindfulness and concentration practice. So very important. <clears throat> and it, I recently um, had uh, needed to share some, how do I say this, <laughs> some uh, very clear communication with somebody. And uh, it took, uh, took many days before I even attempted to write something down because they needed to cool the flames, cool down, cool down, took several days. And then many drafts, letting other people give input, lots of editing, like a lot of wise intention to not cause more harm with the feedback that I needed to give. That, um, yeah, to not let that harm and fuel more harm to others and I was really struck by how much work it took to not just like but a being <laughs> oh yeah you know just let it fly at somebody it really took a lot of effort to just wait and wait and wait and 
check it out and ask again and really um yeah so you know we that's an aspect of non-cruelty and uh it takes a lot a lot of intention a lot of work actually hmm okay so i think uh part of uh wise intention fuels wise mindfulness and concentration so let's practice our mindfulness and meditation now feeling our intentions uh nurturing our presence here mm. so adjust your posture as you need for support and ease and kindness part of these intentions of friendliness kindness including ourselves in that as you settle in we bring in this kind awareness just to our posture as we're settling softening feeling and noticing any tensions that have gathered from your day healing into the muscles of the face and neck Lengthening, relaxing, softening. Part of renunciation, perhaps, of letting go of tension that isn't needed right now. And as the neck muscles lengthen, the shoulders drop down. Relaxing all the way down the arms into soft, receptive hands. Hands that are in a posture of non-clinging. If it's helpful, taking a slightly deeper breath or two to soften any tension in the belly or chest. Allowing some movement to be felt. And then relaxing the breath again and feeling some softness through the torso. And then feeling into the weight and heaviness of the pelvis and the leg bones. Grounded through the feet.
as part of this spring equinox, you might connect to the sensation or feel the sense of rootedness, groundedness. And then gently biting into awareness, this renunciation that we were practicing and talking about of what you feel ready to dissolve, uh, perhaps lessen or release entirely a belief, a pattern, a habit that maybe was there to protect you but is no longer needed. And feel or see that belief or pattern dissolving, releasing, letting go in your belly and in your heart and in your mind. And then you might picture or feel a place in your body where you want to plant the seed of wise intention. For some, it might feel like in the belly or in the heart center. Could be anywhere, anywhere. See what feels resonant for you. And then reflecting on either what you already became aware of or seeing what's arising now in terms of goodwill, friendliness, harmlessness, generosity. Is there a particular aspect in relation to yourself or others that you really want to cultivate? You might picture or feel yourself really, really letting that land in your body in a way that you could even touch or remember.
And you might feel or contemplate deep in that intention by seeing yourself acting in that way with others, with yourself. And then we can begin to just let this part of the practice settle and release. And then we'll begin to cultivate now this aspect of wise intention, which is to cultivate wise mindfulness. So now you could choose an anchor for the rest of this meditation practice. It might be the breath arising and passing. Or you could use a phrase to cultivate further metta or karuna, such as, may I be happy. May I be safe, may I be well, may I be peaceful. Or you can use this in relation to others, may you. And continue repeating these phrases. May I or may you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be peaceful. And this cultivates wise mindfulness. Or you could just use the breath awareness. If the mind has gotten caught in any ruminating or stories or hooks, just practice renunciation and let it subside, let it go. And return to breath awareness or 
metta phrases. May I be happy. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be peaceful. And in these last few minutes of the practice, I'll share a poem from Rosemary Watola Tromer called Falling in Love with Life on the Equinox. Because after the sunshine slipped under my sweater, snowflakes teased my cheek because this morning's silence became mid-morning geese because waking because sleep because after the memorial for a beloved wizened man we watched the kids walk across the stage at school because foolishness, because truth, because buds swell on willows and still the garden sits untouched, because love, because fear, because my heart is here and not here. Because there are moments we feel ourselves balanced between two sides of the same life. Because balance lasts only a moment. Because day, because night. May we, may I, may all beings continue to cultivate wise intention. The intentions of generosity and renunciation, of friendliness and goodwill, of harmlessness and nonviolence.
may all beings awaken So for those of you that have practiced with us here on the YouTube channel, check the links below for um, Rosemary's poem that I shared. Um, and uh, there's also a link to the retreat there. Thanks for practicing with us. <laughs>